Hi, everyone. In this, my second talk at this conference, I will speak about redox active materials for organic uh, potassium batteries. Uh, and I want to start with uh, the motivation. Uh, you know that uh, currently uh, combustion of fossil fuel is still used as a major source of energy. However, we need to stop this and we need to switch to renewables such as solar or wind uh, generated energy in order to mitigate the climate change and enable sustainable development of our society on a long term perspective. However, you know that renewables, they suffer from uh, severe seasonal and daily variations in the uh, energy production. And it's quite a typical situation when uh, the energy generation does not match in time the energy demand, like shown here for uh, photovoltaic panels. Wherefore, if we want to operate energy rates with any significant uh, contribution from the renewables, we need to uh, connect some high capacity energy storage units to these rates. Uh, unfortunately, energy, uh, sorry, cost efficient solutions for bulk energy storage are based currently on very phys simple physical principles like pumping water or compressing air. However, these technologies, they uh, require some specific geographic locations like mountain lakes or abundant mines where this kind of uh, storage can be realized. Obviously, the amount of such facilities is not sufficient to solve the problem. Furthermore, we want to be independent on the geographic locations in order to uh, realize uh, massive uh, implementation of uh, renewables. Therefore, we need some scalable and low-cost battery technology. And in this context, lithium-ion batteries are still too expensive. If you consider the cost analysis for different types of lithium-ion batteries, you could see that cathode component accounts for like half of the price. And if you want to uh, reduce the cost of uh, the batteries, we need to uh, make cathodes much cheaper. And this can be achieved, for instance, by replacing oxides or salts of uh, transition metals, sometimes precious ones, with uh, cheap organics, cheap organic materials. Uh, at the same time, we need to get rid of lithium because lithium became costly by itself and its the amount of lithium is quite limited. And we need to switch to other ions like sodium or potassium because the amount of these elements is much bigger and they are much, much cheaper. Well, I want to emphasize that going from inorganic oxides or salts to organic cathodes can not just allow us to solve the problem of the cost of the batteries, but could also lead to tremendous improvement in the battery performance. For instance, even, even if we use this simple salt of hydroquinone as cathode material, we could get the specific capacity of more than 400 million hours per gram, which is like three times higher compared to the ultimate capacity of lithium iron phosphate, which is a typical cathode material used in uh, uh, commercial lithium ion batteries. Uh, even if we go to potassium salt of hydroquinone, which is another illustrative example, we could keep the specific capacity of about 300 million hours per gram, which is high enough, higher compared to most of inorganic cathodes used by the uh, battery industry. Now let me show some of our results in this area. So in the first part of our work, we utilized this well-known precursor material, uh, hexaketone, uh, trichinoil, uh, to synthesize in a single step a range of low molecular weight and polymeric materials. And uh, the synthesis was quite efficient and all, the, all these materials were obtained with virtually quantitative yields. Some of these materials demonstrated quite nice electrochemical performance, like you see here for uh, low molecular weight compound M2 and polymer P1. Uh, we had specific capacities ranging from 200 to 400 milliamps per gram, uh, decent rate capability, quite nice uh, cyclability. So you see no capacity fading for hundreds, sometimes thousands of cycles. And you see that discharge potentials of these batteries is not high enough. And wherefore these compounds, these materials are mostly uh, anode uh, components. 
of potassium ion batteries. Uh, somewhat higher potentials could be achieved using uh, uh, covalent or Henning frameworks. We designed this material incorporating hexa as a trifenylen unit and demonstrated that it operates in equally efficient way in lithium, potassium, lithium sodium, and also potassium batteries. You see that we could have uh, specific capacities above 200 milliamps per gram for all three types of batteries. Uh, quite decent rate capability and excellent stability. So you see no capacity fading for thousands, more than four thousands of cycles for potassium batteries. And I mean, in terms of, even in terms of energy density, we could have one of the best results ever reported for potassium uh, batteries uh, so far. But further progress, of course, requires some high potential uh, organic cathodes, which are mostly based on aromatic amides. And this particular material was introduced recently by a Chinese group, uh, which used uh, it as a cathode for lithium dual ion batteries. We optimized the synthesis of this polymer and utilized it as cathode in potassium batteries, and we achieved the discharge potentials close to four volts, uh, quite nice rate capability, good uh, stability and uh, the energy density of these batteries, uh, actually of the cathodes uh, of these batteries was close to 600 watt hours per kilogram. And this was the first hour report. And in the second report, we were able to increase it uh, up to 610, 620 watt hours per kilogram. Uh, further uh, optimization uh, could be done on the anode side uh, following the uh, recent uh, approach uh, introduced by John Hudenab group. Uh, this approach is based on using liquid sodium potassium alloy impregnated in carbon paper as self-regenerable anode. And the main advantage of this approach is related to the fact that liquid metal cannot form dendrites. You know that dendrite formation is the most severe problem of all types of lithium ion batteries. In this case, we don't form dendrites, so we could cycle these batteries at ultra high current densities, up to 50 or even 100 amperes per gram. And these two cathode materials, they could sustain this high density, high current density operation regimes, and they provide quite nice rate capabilities. On the right side, you see the comparison of these devices with uh, other types of metal ion batteries and also supercapacitors in terms of the energy density and the power density. And you could see that this comparison is quite favorable for these organic materials. So we could have a uh, specific power up to 10 to the power five, I mean 100,000 watts per kilogram which makes them comparable to uh, supercapacitors. Now, let me summarize my talk. And the first message is that we designed a range of promising low molecular weight and polymeric materials with uh, a number of uh, redox active functional groups. Some of these materials demonstrated quite uh, promising uh, operation as anode components in potassium batteries delivering specific capacities between 200 and 400 milliamp hours per gram uh, in combination with good rate capability and excellent uh, cycling stability. Some other materials were demonstrated to operate as high voltage cathode materials delivering record high uh, energy densities of more than 600 watt hours per kilogram. Optimized uh, potassium batteries using new polymeric electrodes delivered uh, simultaneously high energy density, high specific power and excellent operational stability for more than 10,000 cycles, which makes them an appealing alternative to supercapacitors and also promising technology for large scale stationary energy storage. I want to thank my colleagues who contributed to this work, funding agencies for financial support and you for your attention. Thank you.